welcome to Build the Damn Thing, a place where myself, Tiffany Largi, and our amazing Do the Damn Thing coaches show you how to use your story to build it all. Whether it's your first six figures, your next layer of multiple six figures, or maybe you're on your way to a million. And if it's not that, it's the life of your dreams, where you are free, you are strong, and you are whole. First, we're going to show you how to use your story to build a strong foundation. And then next, we're going to show you how to use your story in sales and marketing to clean up the cracks. And last but not least, we're going to show you how to use your story to gather people. Because the truth of the matter is that there's nothing stronger than being connected to people who just understand you as you are where you are so you can stop explaining yourself. I want to remind you that now that you're here, you are home, and I officially welcome you to our family. All right, let's get started. And just like that, you know, I, um, it's really common for me to spend this time and say, you got to be the expert, but then here's what's really true. The expert has an opinion and, uh, here at the studio, we just finished producing an event and I was talking to Matt and talking uh, to uh, Daniel and then one of our amazing clients, Clifford Hughley, and I said, I can't believe it. The truth of the matter is that the second I saw that CNN said that uh, decided to produce a whole series called After the Slap. Do you know that <laughs> CNN has an entire series at this moment called After the Slap? And so at this moment, I was like, we got to talk about it because here's what's real. What I know for sure The expert has an opinion, they have a thought, they are very clear, and they are willing to share it. And I wanted to hear what you think. So uh, less than 24 hours ago, we all lived in a world where Will Smith decided to run onto the stage in the middle of an entire, what do you even call that, Matt? One of the biggest, uh, one of the biggest ceremonies and gatherings that everybody, yeah. And what does he do? So let's 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 back this up because <laughs> he walks on stage. He makes history. I feel like I need to say he makes world history. And well, and 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 even if you were to back it up even more, like this was one of the first times that the Oscars were really getting back together post pandemic. Uh, so there was so much excitement of all of the celebrities, all of the everybody getting back together again, like a reunited, and, and it, it feels, feels so good, like. And so this was one of the most anticipated ceremonies. And probably also one of the biggest watched. Right. Right? Because it's been so long. And everybody's looking to see who, uh, beyond the who's who's, but then no one has a mask or they're not wearing a mask and such and such and such. And we were talking earlier and Clifford said something that uh, made me say to myself, I think this has to be discussed because... Uh, one, the world has now become divided all over again about Will Smith. Thank you very much, Will Smith. Number two, I learned, um, or I was reminded, as you said, Matt, how often it is that we have different perspectives looking at the same exact thing and from women who are pissed off thinking Mm -hmm. to themselves, how could you dismantle a woman's power? Good googly moogly. Have you heard that one, Clifford, yet? No, I haven't heard that. (laughs) Listen, listen. You know what? Let's, Let's just jump right in. So, um, I mean, do we want to play the video back just for a view <laughs> so they can hear it? Just so they can hear it, you know? Maybe, maybe they don't know what happened. Listen, okay, so let's talk about what happened. Should we play it? No, should we play yeah. it back? Yeah, yes. go for it. Yeah, all right, here we go. Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. All right? <laughs> <laughs> it's, that, was a, that was a nice one. Okay. I'm out here. Uh Uh-oh, Richard. (laughs) Oh, wow. Sweet Jesus. Ding! It's almost like you can hear the sound Mm -hmm. (laughs) waving through. You know, um, I I didn't want to read any of the comments or thoughts, but then I realized that the world was getting a little bit crazy, and I want to kind of read you some of the comments that I have um, embarked upon. (laughs) As a woman... As a um, as an onlooker, and this one I thought was the most fascinating, and I gotta hear what do you think, because before I even jumped into jump into your opinion about what happened, I can't believe that Will Smith um, found a way. What is it to 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 depower? To de- depower women, yes. As a matter of fact, I can read like. How did this become a conversation about women being depowered? I got to be very honest with you. As a woman myself, I listened to that and I was like, 
What are you talking about? How dare he take up for his woman and run on stage? It is dismantling her voice. It is diminishing her as a woman. And I thought to myself, since when did this become about women's rights? Well, see, and that's the thing that I found the most fascinating about this whole thing. Like, we all saw the exact few seconds of, of a moment. No, it wasn't really a few seconds. It felt like a whole lifetime. <laughs> I mean, there are two episodes. Right. I mean, the guy walks on stage, right? And he slaps. And this is a whole other conversation because I have to find out when, since when are men slapping men? In this, that's just my that, perspective. Yeah. Like I, I didn't even know that. I didn't even know when I when I saw him walk on stage. I thought for sure a fist was going to be thrown, but then there was a slap. What is that? But then he walks off stage, and then we have episode two. Episode two. So if you can, right. if you don't mind distinguishing the conversation between episode one and episode <laughs> two moving forward. So episode one being the the moment of the slap. Episode two is getting back down to his seat and then screaming from his seat. The moment of the slap. Right. The moment of the slap. Don't be saying my wife's name in your mouth. So I just have to ask you really quickly, um, wrong or right? I, I need to know right out of the gate. And Daniel, I'm dying to hear from you too. Um, yes or no, Will Smith is justified to get on this stage. And first, episode one, <laughs> is he justified to get on stage and slap rock in the middle <laughs> of the event and walk off stage? Yes or no? Uh, no. No, he's not justified to walk on stage. Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> so that's episode one. We're only on episode one. Is he justified? Clifford? No. Okay. Why is he not justified? Why is he not justified? Before I get to you, Matt, because you, you, I'm going to assume that you think he's not justified either. That's correct. Okay. Uh, have you read a lot of comments yet from people who I have been, and, and I'm, I'm intrigued by the different responses. Are there a lot of people who are like, no, 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 he had to do that. I can't believe Chris Rock. Yes. Okay, we're going to get into that in a moment. So why is he not justified? Like, um, there's this chivalry type of thing in which someone, in theory, is trying your person, and this happens to be his wife, and he feels offended, and he feels like he needs to go and defend her. Yeah, so... When, when it comes down to it, I think violence is never the answer to anything unless you're self-defense, right? Unless, unless Chris came and was about to slap his wife, right? I don't think that merited a slap. If you think about it, my perspective, if he just eliminated the whole slap and just yelled, get my wife's name out of your mother effing right. mouth, I think that would have got the point across. Yes, yes. Just as yes. much as a slap, Correct. Right? And without actually insul assaulting anyone. Um, so I think that perhaps was a little bit too far. Um, yeah, I just, I just don't think violence is ever the answer when, when someone's not doing anything violent towards you, right? When someone's not doing anything violent to, okay, so for you, you say that was violence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, just, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And I think, I think you used the keyword, I think you used the keyword is assault because that's what it is. If it was anybody else other than Will Smith. Yeah, let's just talk about that for a moment. If there were anybody else other than Will Smith. Right. I if don't they, think it would have gotten away. I would not, as a black woman, LAPD random. LAPD would have been there, arresting their ass, getting them off Right of now, like, there'd be hashtag pray for Tiffany. <laughs> right, yeah, <laughs> Do you right. understand? Right now, there'd be hashtag pray for Tiffany. Yeah. I'd be gone. There's no way we would have gotten away with it. You uh, told me, um, Clifford, that you thought, you gave me a really great perspective. So we just finished doing an amazing event, and Clifford flew in. And right before he was going to leave the event, he said something really neat about privilege. And he also talked about the fact that he just didn't feel like Will Smith had the right. So I know it sounds crazy, but those, they're almost two different things. He was like, I don't think that Will Smith even has the right beyond the privilege because of the fact of how he's carried himself and who he has been or has said in pieces or out loud or collective who he is. And I said, you know, I think that's such an interesting perspective. Um, do you ever say to yourself, Clifford, do you say to yourself that um, you heard, does anyone, did anyone hear something that was really painful from stage? I didn't. That's just my perspective. I didn't hear heard Chris what? Rock. Painful. Like Chris Rock didn't really even say, he said G.I. Jane. It right. wasn't anything more than that. Am I right? Correct. Correct. Right. And, and, and referring to the hairstyle that she has, 
which uh, the hair where, the hair loss the hair loss suffered. but yeah. right but did he say hair loss did he use the words like hey and your it's, hair loss now reminds me of gi jane i mean it's it's inferred right like but like, it's not common knowledge so that's that's another thing like yes she's been public about about alopecia and her condition but it's not necessarily common knowledge that that's why she her hair is the way it is it just looks like she's rocking a new style which yeah, is, but I mean, then wait, I don't, do you I don't know like it, you if, if someone, offensive? if someone, yeah, if someone walked up to me and like, didn't say a racial slur, but it sinuated it, are they a racist or not? <laughs> wait, wait, <laughs> rewind. No, but rewind. you know what I'm saying? Like, like, you don't have to say it. I don't like you cause you're different. But I didn't, didn't say it cause you're black. But he, but hold on. I, I, I like, correct me. I thought he said something like, and your wife over there rocking it like GI Jane. We can't. We can't wait for the GI Jane two. We can't wait for G. Right. Right. That's yeah. not bad. I'm sorry. That well, ident highlighting the fact that she has no hair. Yes, I understand that. But there are a lot of women who carry their hairs in those hairstyles, and that's by choice. And GI Jane was a very, for me, represents a strong woman. It's not like he's. Ta it's, it's not right. Represents a strong woman. Like if he had said like an animal or. Like something like, like that. Like a beat down woman. Yes. Like, I actually heard it. And I, am I wrong, Cliff? Well, I, I, I think it's totally different, right? So so you got to take people's perspective. So so Chris Rock, he's a stand-up. He, he made his, his, his career off of, of doing just what he did, yeah, right? For sure. so, so he's at work. That's what he does, mm. right? So to take it personal. That that he's picking on, he just he's picking on you. He's picking on your wife. No, yeah, yeah. that's 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 he he's at work. So why interrupt him while he's at work? That's that's what he does. If if, if you didn't want if you didn't want to be part of 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 the attention, you probably shouldn't be in the audience mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. anybody within that audience was free game. Mm -hmm. Right, I agree. Here, yeah. Here's what's crazy about anybody it, guys. in so, the audience was free game. So. Uh, Chris Rock actually confirmed he did not write the joke, and it was given to him by the writers. Shut up! Yeah. Somebody's Shut getting up. fired. Yeah, yeah. Somebody's Shut up! <laughs> so, so people are like, dude, he was set up. Right. Shut yeah. up! No way! Oh, that's a whole different conversation. Really? So one of, one of the... That's, wait, wait, wait. How does that change your perspective? That's crazy. Well, and, and qu quite a lot of, the, of what they say usually is done with co-written co with writers. Yeah, for sure, but I didn't see that coming because I thought about that too this morning, and I for sure said he probably went outside of the norm, gave his addi the additional sentence, thought thinking it would be okay. But man, the fact that it was written, good googly moogly. You, you, as a celebrity, I think you have to. There is the expectation, to your point, Clifford, that you know everybody's fair game. Mm -hmm. Everybody gets made fun of, and look if you look at all of the all of the different jokes that even the, the hosts had leading up to when they started, yeah. you know, they were talking about different directors and they were talking about different moments. And so it, you almost have to step into that space. Like when you go to a comedy show, you know, if you're, yeah, if you're sitting in the front row, you're going to get picked on. Yeah, by but a, some by a people are more fair game than others. Right. So yes, I like, agree with that. statement. Like I know that I can be very open with my jokes with Tiffany. Right. And, and Matt, not going back too far, you and I had a conversation about jokes right. just a few months ago, right? right? And we understood there's a line for you and I. Right. But we for don't Tiffany and I, we're still trying to figure out that line. But in 2016, Chris Rock mocked, mocked her as well because she boycotted the Oscars because lack of diversity. Hmm. Right? And she says, oh, you're just boycotting because you weren't even invited. Mm -hmm. Right? And so, and then she says, hey, just keep it moving. So there's been a history between them. Who knows what else was said? Yeah, right. yeah, for sure. But obviously, if someone takes offense to a joke, you got to chill out, right? Maybe not the best person to joke about. So maybe you could have so targeted you like, someone else. You feel like that um, he said something and it was clear that he wasn't really intrigued by the joke and then he kept going? I think it's just been ongoing. Ongoing. I, I don't think so this was like, like a one-time thing that happened. I think it's, hey, Chris Rock picked on on Will's wife. That's just the thing. You know, I'll tell you, I, I, I really actually appreciate that perspective for sure. Um, uh, Clifford and Daniel, I, I, I was married. I'm married to, I, let me tell you, I have been in the comedy land for the last 13 years of my life. I have been to more than 300 comedy shows and I'm very, very close to all people involved. And you know, I respected the statement of the man is at work. 
Um, and I agree with you because for a comedian, you never know. I think they're the only people or the only industry of people that th there is never They make a living off of being a gray, a great, a great party, right? Mm -hmm. They're never black or white. They dance near the line. Right. They light the lines on fire. They have to push the line. And they have to push the line consistently, and that's how they make their money. That's how they make their platform. And for good or bad, you know, it, for me, it just is what it is. However, I do really respect what Daniel just said about the fact that he should have known better. Because at some point, I do feel like, he had a list of all the jokes that were going to be said. Right. He knows him and Jada and Will have beef or there's some type of beef. This is the feel good event. We're right. all coming back from the thing. So why are you going to go there? I also say, wait, you don't agree. No. You were like, no, absolutely <laughs> not. Clifford's like, no. I, I, I think that, that so, so with anything, you, 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 you build on what's, what's going to give you that, that, that all factor. Right. Mm. So, so, so he's going in where he think he's going to get the most bang for the book. I right? Agree. So right. so if he has a list uh, then then what where where is he going to go in at, right? So so I I think and and, and who who does it better, right? So so he, he knows exactly what 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 pain points to push. Mm -hmm. yeah, right? Yeah, so sure. so that that's the name of the game, and and, and so he's there for ratings. Yeah. And, and, and no, no doubt about it, right? So it, it, they they wrote the joke, but he delivered it in a way that that made that, that got everybody, everybody probably like what, that that had anything to do with the, the backstory. So we don't know the backstory, right? right? We right? don't know the backstory. But, but some pro probably people were like, "Ouch!" Right? But but we all the only thing we seen was the, the joke, and and, and evidently it got it got the ratings. It, it pushed the pain point, right? That that got a response, right. and a response that that took it to a whole nother level. Yeah, for sure. Uh, right. Now, what I want to know is, I want to see what happened. If you actually watch the the footage and the of what was aired, you see Will Smith actually laugh at the joke. He did. And then, Thank and you. Then, and I then was the, gonna bring that and up. And then the camera switches over, and then all of a sudden he gets up. Now you see Jada upset by the comments. She rolls her or she rolls her eyes. But he laughed at the joke at first. Thank you. So what happened when the camera turned Thank away? You. Like, did she say something? And then he realized, oh, maybe I shouldn't have laughed. Or maybe, like, because... I think there's something inside of that. And I think that they're also in a new phase of having to, you know, prove themselves to each other in their relationship. And I've got you in, and right. et cetera, et cetera. And so he was like, oh, I'm going to make the <laughs> biggest scene ever. So then, and, and then at that point, that's a decision to use violence. Yeah. To, for that moment, because he could have said something there. And here's the thing. He was very from the moment that he decided I'm going to get up and I'm going to address Chris. However, he it, what he made his mind or what he was going to do. That's a pretty long walk from his seat to the actual stage where he could have decided to do something different. A hundred percent. So he was one. He was committed to that moment. He was committed to scene one. Yeah, like the step slap. one, step two, step right. three. Yes. And then to sit back down and continue, even when Chris Rock, when he said, don't you don't have my wife's uh, my wife's name in your motherfucking. Mouth, he then Chris said, I won't like Chris was like, OK, I'm That's moving it. on. Yes. Chris was not like, what did you just do? And da, 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 da. he was like, what just happened? I'm going right. to take a step back. Like, like my hands are up in the air, literally. <laughs> like, I, I think that was probably one of the most quietest moments that you've ever seen a group of celebrities. No one knew what to do with <laughs> themselves at all. But, you know, um, we didn't talk about it much, but uh, Daniel said something really important where he talked about, well, violence is never the answer. So, though I, I hear him and I agree with him, um, you know, I said to myself, at some point, like, <sighs> Like there is, there is a team, it's called Team Doing Too Much. I felt like for me, this was a, an episode of Team Doing Too Much. And I felt like in some type of decisive moment, Will makes this decision, but with the weight of the responsibility that he has uh, around the world, because there are children who are watching this, right. right? This is like a family kind of gig that you watch every year. I've watched every year for years and years and years. There are kids watching this. There are kids in the audience are, I'm sure, close by. And he makes this move. And then what I think uh, what makes me wonder or worries me is that on his way back down, he had no remorse. You get it? To, to, to open it. So now we had episode two. 
Right. Right. And he makes a decision to double down in it. Now, I'm not here saying if Chris Wright is wrong or right. Well, let's not, not even get there. But the fact that he doubles down afterwards and he, you know what I mean? Right. Like, he has no remorse. Because sometimes, uh, I'm sure we can all agree here, what we've done or said something, we're like, flip. We're like, shit, I can't right. believe I said that. Doggone it. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have. Or, for me, I know I can think of five times where I went, oh, I know this is going to go bad. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that I back down, but I stop. I'm done, right? The moment's done. But I really am like, man, the brother kept going. Well, I, I think it's to Matt's point, right? So so that, that that's like the three mile walk when you went as, as you walked up to that to that stage, right? Mm-hmm. So so it's not like it was it was it was the next table. He he had enough time to act as, as he walked to think about, okay, this is what's what's gonna happen. Right. right. So he contemplated that. He thought it through mm-hmm. and, and he followed through. Right. So but what he didn't know is how Chris was going to respond. Right. Right. So so I think when Chris didn't respond, he didn't know how to how to carry that through then. Because he right? realized he was by himself. Right. Right. Yes. So 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 when Chris didn't respond, then it was like. Well, shit, I think I just fucked up. Yeah, yes. yes. literally, yes. <laughs> but, yes. So there really is truly a scene three to all of this when Will actually won the award and he went and he, and he did his acceptance speech. He apologized to the Academy. He apologized to the fellow nominees, but he never apologized to Chris. So That's once bananas. A, so once again, he's he is, in his mind, he's right in what he did. He made the right decision. You know, I think, you know, it's kind of like I said to you during the, our event, I whispered to Cliff maybe three days ago, you really got to read the Will Smith book because I just read the book uh, myself and um, I found myself the second half of it struggling with him as a person, but I really enjoyed the book and I learned a lot from it. But what was real for me was this sense of entitlement that I had never seen any celebrity, and I'm very close to celebrity land. Um, I've never seen it. It was like an ego that I just couldn't, Mm. that could never be satisfied. And it reminds me of a part of, of, uh, in the book, he talks about the fact that um, him and Jada are um, like in their spaces, and I believe it's her birthday's coming up. So he makes a decision. He's like, I know I'm going to be the world's hero and I'm going to make her a birthday that she'll never forget kind of a thing. So he flies in like all her family members. He creates like a, a whole mo- like a whole, you know, cinematic movie <laughs> that shows her whole life. And it's like the perfect experience. But at the end of it, during the whole experience, she's stone faced and straight faced. And um, uh, the day of awesomeness, the movie, the dinner that's falling from the sky she kind of ends her day, gets up, says nothing to him, and goes back to the hotel room. But he is looking for, you're the hero. She walks with, they go back to the room, and she basically explains to him, this entire time you've missed the whole point, you know? Right. And he's like, you're crazy. I just spent the last X amount of time and dollars and thinking of making you the, you know, making the best blah, blah, blah. And inadvertently she says, no, you didn't do that for me. You didn't do this whole event for me. It was amazing. And I'm glad my whole family's here. And you did a cinematic movie of my life since before I was born. Like, you know, but you did this for you. Mm -hmm. Part of me watched that yesterday and thought to myself that he did it for himself. No, so, uh, no, I think men just can't win. I think we, <laughs> I think we just can't win. <laughs> I, uh, I defend a woman's rights? How dare he slap another dude? I do an awesome party? Oh my gosh, you did it for yourself. At what point? Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't think that was defending a woman's rights, right? You think I, that I, was defending a woman's rights, Daniel? Not her rights. Her, one second. You feel like that was the def- like? Take a moment with me. Do you really, truly? Say to yourself that was defending, not her rights. But think about how often we say, "Oh, chivalry is dead." Okay, right? so wait, so you're saying he should have no, defended no, 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 her. No, wait. no, no, no. I think he should have spoken up. I don't think he should have slapped. Oh, wait, her. So you do think he should have spoken up? Right. I don't think he should have slapped. Him. Okay, hold on. So right. this is a different perspective. So yeah. I just want to be clear. So you're saying actually that he should have spoken up? Yeah. For sure. You yeah. feel like the comment was appalling? Yeah. Okay, you yeah. feel appalled there's, by the call. There's a lot of things I make fun of, right? I, I'm I like to I like to do like what is what is it called? It's called a um, injury insults. No, in, insult comedy. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, insult comedy. I love it. 
I love it so much. But I know there's certain things I don't go for. I go for things you can't change. You have no control over, right? Or if you have a dietary restriction because it'll kill you. I will never joke about that because there's nothing you can do. I will never joke about your height. Like, right. what are you going to do? Just, like, will yourself taller? Yeah, right? yeah. I so, get that. But I joke about things that are in your control. Like if for you, sure. Like, your sushi is vegetarian, but two you love sushi. It makes or two no different colored socks. No, or, it does make sense. You be quiet. <laughs> you be quiet. Or two different colored socks, right? Mm -hmm. Or I don't eat chicken with bones in it, but I eat normal chicken. It <laughs> makes no sense. <laughs> I, I wouldn't make fun of that. Right. But it doesn't make sense to, to make fun of something somebody can't control. So that's where I, I kind of draw the line where we're sure like insult comedy is hilarious. Right. But when you attack somebody's wife, like insult will all you want. Right. Insult will all you want. But don't insult his wife. Who's not even a nominee. She's just there attending with him. You know, I well, hear you. Well, yes and no. Right. I'm about to insult I, you right now, Clifford. You I, I, you. <laughs> just don't talk about a cowboy hat. That goofy hat. I, I, don't I, 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 <laughs> Uh, I, hey, I'm, I'm I'm used to being a soldier, right? I, I'm, I'm, hey, I'm a black man in America. You know, oh, I know right. that's right. Oh, no, listen. Come on. So 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 look, given you, you I, I think you gotta take the good with the bad, and 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 and, and that the family in, in general, right? It's it's no their 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 family lifestyle. Right is is totally different from uh -oh. from, from most. Mm -hmm. Clifford's going there, and, and 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 so when you when you open the door, come on, and let people into your in, into your your private world, right? And, and so that, none yeah. of that's a secret, right? So so where do you draw the line? And so so now you 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 can't come back for that, right? And, and and so now everything everything is is kind of fair game. And and so you can't you 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 can't get mad right when somebody comes at you because everything is fair again. You put it out there. I I didn't I didn't go get it. Right. You you put it out there. And so when you put it out there, then everything is is fair again. And so I, I look at it as in that moment, are you mad at Chris, or are you mad at yourself? Mm. Right. So, so so who are you ang or who are you really angry at? Because right. now you you you're having to double down on That's something. Great. That that's you sitting back and you like, well, shit, man. You know, I, I got my wife here. She she's not happy, but the joke was funny, right? Everybody's like, yeah, it was. <laughs> but, but, but 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 he knew at that moment that just saying something to Chris w was only gonna make it worse, right? Because Chris. At that moment, if you had to say something, only thing he was gonna do is take it and twist it up, right, and, and and give it right back to you, right, right. So 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 how can you defend that? You can't. Yeah. Right. So he had to take it to a whole nother level, right? And to a level, I, I think that 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 given that that we 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 become kind of kind of contradictive to to what we stand by. We you know we, we we sit back and we say, okay, well, well we we we, we shouldn't we shouldn't we shouldn't allow violence, right? We should we should go black on black, right? We we talk about the the the, the, the young kids and how they're acting and and, yeah. and 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 on the streets and different things, but in that moment, we did this, he did the exact same thing that that he talked out against, right? I mean, well, right, for sure. So so 100%. now now everybody's sitting back like, well, man, you you you, you? yeah, you, you're not so different than us, right? I agree, 100%. So the comment that, that was made was stopping violent in women's name. That was not defending us. That was you defending your ego. Who this said is, that? Who wait, said wait, that? Wait, so there's a woman. Who, this who is, this is, this no, is no, a woman. Who said that? This no, is, we're this is a, a woman. This, of is, the this is off of the, uh, this is woman? a Facebook. Just a random woman? No, this is somebody. Okay, you know what? Read her name. Okay, this is Julie Long, who's part of our community. Oh. Uh, do the damn thing. <laughs> and and her, 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 <laughs> and her, com her comment says, stop being violent in women's name. That's not defending us. That's your ego you're defending. That is causing us more pain, more problems that we have to deal with. At the Oscars last night, Chris Rock made a joke about Jada Pinkett's baldness. It was in poor taste and out of line, but it was clear that the joke hurt her. She has alopecia and has shown great courage in talking about it in the world where a woman's hair, especially a black woman's hair, is a big part of their identity. Instead of comforting her, calling out Chris Rock by, for joking about her alopecia, Jada's husband chose violence to defend her. 
Instead, what her husband did was multiply her pain and amplify her uh, ridicule to a global level. Why? To soothe his own ego. That's a whole statement, though. We, That's right, a whole statement. Uh, we've been. This is this is not like the first time a guy has done this, though. Like it's, it's been throughout the entire history of humankind. You mean like, like over a woman, or you mean just in general? No, like no, over a woman, right? Like Helena of Troy, right? A dude literally invaded an entire city and murdered everyone because of his wife. So. It's like at the end of the day, I'm thinking, okay. Well, I, I here. Let me. A respond. rich dude slapped another rich dude over a rich woman. Like, really? Do we need to care that much? <laughs> but and, now, and, now, that I'm, now that I'm sitting here in this conversation, like, do we really need to care? Well, this and much? and here's the thing. Like, it has completely distracted everything that's truly going on if and the Will most Smith important in the world. Me, I would be grateful. <laughs> you know, I'd be like, guys, I was just smacked by Will Smith. That was incredible. <laughs> well, and well, even Chris, even Chris said wait, that. Wait, I just got this. I wouldn't let anyone smack me except for Chris. Chris Brown, that is. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna give you that one. Oh, that was, that good. was good. Oh, that is so good. But you know, you you look at at Will and well, do and you agree or disagree with this statement? I, I agree. I, I you agree? Yeah. I you know I gotta go back to what Daniel said about well, well, what does a woman want? Being a woman, let me tell you this. Because you have a vagina. I have one. Yes. And I use it and know um, its effectiveness. And the reality is that I love the fact that he defended her. Mm -hmm. Forget how and what. I guess maybe it's culture or where I'm from. Like I listen to that and I hear her. But the part that loses me, it's like, you know, dismantling a woman's voice and such and such and such and such. And for me, I'm like, go burn down the city on my behalf. I know that sounds crazy, but maybe that's just how I'm raised or where I'm from. Now, do, do I say that I, ex I mean, would I have been like, go do something about that, you know? Right. Like, I don't think I would have gone there. You just slapped me, by the way. I just I, did, I did slap you. Yeah. I think we're all in a, um, I think this is a new phase that we're entering in. <laughs> and I'm really sorry ahead of time. Okay. So, um, but the, the truth is that when she starts to talk about a woman's voice and bringing it to a global level, if he would have turned to me, here's the truth. If he would have turned to me and consoled me, and not said something, I would have been upset. Mm. If he would have just turned in this private place, and maybe you understand where I'm coming from, but, like, I don't know if that's hood shit. I'm not sure where that comes from. But honestly, I'm like, if he would have been like, I'm so sorry, honey, that that happened to you. And I don't know. I am i don't know that I'm expecting him to go on the stage. Right. And I don't know that the answer is, you know, keep your – I don't think that's that, – I mean, I know that's not the answer either because there are children – like, it's bad. All of the things Will Smith did is bad, period, end of subject. And I do believe his ego is in place. But if the man didn't defend me, maybe not instantly, but in my mind, I'm like, just wait till the after party. You know what I mean? Like, or wait till you had the actual stage when he won the award. Like, that would have been the opportunity to, to go through and to say something. But to say something is different. I'm from the hood. Like, uh, some words like, hey, you shouldn't have said this about my wife. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you right yeah, now. But I, 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 I think that, that there was plenty of opportunity to, to address that, right? It, it, it didn't have to be addressed right then. Correct. For sure. All right, so, so uh, I mean, as many opportunities as, as Chris Rock went backstage... He could have got up and went backstage and, and, and met him back there, and 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 they, they, sure. they could have handled that out, For right? Sure. So so <laughs> it didn't have to be a, a, a public display, but it was it was meant to be because now you're compensating for something else. Mm -mm. So so to that point, looking at everything that Will has been going through recently, he's got his, his book that came out. Their family is very public. <laughs> um, the, he was extremely emotional during his acceptance speech. Like crying all the way through it, like to me that 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 speaks to there's something more that was there. You got to read this book. You got to read his book. So I I have the audio that I've been started. I just started. I'm only on chapter three, but I I just there's so much more. And when he talks about it's pain, the calling that God that God has got. You know, <coughs> um, I love the words that that Denzel gave him. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, the comments of when you are at your highest, that's when the devil hits. 
You know, I'm going to play devil's advocate for, for two minutes because I know for myself there's a handful of times where I, like, because when I'm mad, I'm mad. Or when I'm upset, I'm upset. And I might, some might consider me blind. You know, I'm not blind to all of the things that are happening, but l let me play devil's advocate and say, is it possible that he just couldn't see during that chapter period of time and then his baggage, his bucket of remorse was when he got to uh, uh, best, uh, best actor? No, because he wasn't even remorseful then. Because he didn't say anything about Chris. All right, right I give up. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I tried. I was trying. I, I, I think that there is a sense of, I go back to the, 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 the sense of privilege, right? Because it, in, in, in that moment, what, what gives you the right, right, to go, one, to interrupt the what, what they had going on, right? right. But to, then you, 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 you go and you strike Chris Rock right there in, on national TV, right? right? So, so. What what gives you the right to even do any of that, right? So so like ruin it for everybody, kind of a thing. When you run it, it, not only that, but but now you you fall back into the stereotype. Now all so you're mad from a black man. All those years mm -hmm. that we went fighting to try to get to a point. Now that you you got people sitting back saying, yeah, that them that that they with them n words again, mm -hmm. right? Black so, on black crime, I'm telling you. Right. right. So so. I think we have to be careful with that, right? Yeah. Because at, yeah. at, at, at you, you, you hit a level and you, you become a crossover, but then... Did you, everybody understand that word? Uh, you guys right. are not even ready for that. So, so, yes, a crossover. So, 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 but then now you put us, you set us back. Now everybody, right. now, now you got the rest of the community, right? Now you got the rest of the actors going back and saying, and they, got to, they got to defend that bullshit, right? right. So, so now they got to clean it up for them. They got how to, they, everybody else got to have to come out and clean all this up. Right, cause cause he can't clean it up. Right. So Cl I love Cl you know what's really neat about even just having this conversation. You're coming from the perspective of a black man. Right. You're like you just fucked it up for all of us. Thank you very much, Will Smith. Right. And what's really fascinating is that um, in leadership, le and, and not to bring this to a leadership conversation, but um, at all times the leader has to re be reminded and remind themselves that they are the leader, because the truth of the matter is that there are so many people around the world who were in love with Will Smith. They saw this moment, and now they have almost written him off in some capacities. They have judged him till forever. I'm not saying he will never come back. That's not what I'm saying. Right. No, he's but Will the Smith. love and the leadership <laughs> that he, whoa, well, I don't know. His, his next movie is going to sell out, I promise you. Yeah, like. Uh, uh, people forget so fast. Look, what happened to COVID? Literally, he slapped Chris Rock, COVID ended. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to the war in ukraine it's gone it's gone they literally are talking about ceasefire talks because yes. they're like shiz if they send will over yes for sure. <laughs> will meets putin it's over <laughs> you see what i'm saying the world forgets where we love instant stuff and so we the moment there's something new in the new cycle we just move on to something else so all we gotta do is just wait till matt does something stupid and we're all gonna forget about will. <laughs> <laughs> that's it that might come sooner than that's it guys give, I, I, give it 48 hours <laughs> <laughs> you know what I, I would agree in some aspect but i i think that this went viral so quick and so fast that that we we have to be careful, right, on 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 what we do and don't do, as a society, as as a culture, right? Because what it what it allows us to happen is, is that it allows for a, a different conversation to be had, right? So we're 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 strong pushing about Black Lives Matter, or we're going backwards, right? And then all of a sudden now national TV do do, do it does it really matter? You know, it's funny I didn't uh, even see it like that, but I, that's an interesting. All this conversation we've had all the last three days, I actually have not seen it like that in terms of black on black crime or what that means to the black community. Um, and more importantly, you're right because he is a crossover. He has a responsibility, and it's funny because for me, even in my industry, the amount of black people who come up to me and have um, over the years and have reminded me that I'm a crossover. And so therefore I have this responsibility and that and that and that I actually do a hundred percent silently take it with me every time I open my mouth that, and, and, and that, and that alone, that's like a different level, but it's a different level of responsibility. It's a different level of like, what were you doing? And you know, how could you? And, um, I, though I do believe he should have defended him. I, I don't know that he, in any capacity, could he be blind enough to, disregard his responsibilities because I can't think of a time from the stage. I can't, I've literally been thinking like, has there been a time from the stage that I created a moment that I couldn't turn back from or that I was so blind to what was happening mm. that I come, that I like, I can't. And uh, granted, I, I 
I don't have the platform like Will Smith does by any means. However, I do, I'm on stage in front of thousands of people in any given year and however many people reach online and there's just no way I'm going to, there's no way, it's not that I'm not going to do it, but I'm, I'm not going to ever forget the leadership kind of flag, badge, card, whatever it is that I carry as a crossover to do that. And that goes For to any sure. anybody in, in whatever industry that they're in that has a voice, that has a platform. Like you have a responsibility as a leader. Say that. And you, you are you do have a responsibility. You you have people that are watching, and not only the people that are that have let you have a responsibility to the people that have fought the way for you to get into your place. Our ancestors that have fought to get you a, a seat at the table or to create a path. You have a responsibility to the work that they did, but you also have a responsibility to the people that are watching, that are being inspired by you, that are looking to you for the answers. He not only did that. And are with spending money towards the things that are part of your business, your world, and your life. He created, he not only impacted the black community, he impacted males, looking at male on male uh, violence, but he also, the industry himself, the, the actors and the, the profession, he's a, he knows what's supposed to happen at those award ceremonies. He knows that this is live television. He knows that they're yeah. going to be like. He knows the rules. Yes. Yeah, but you also think about, he just came off a movie that was about two young black women abused and taken advantage of in the Americas. You see what I'm saying? But, but so like he, he, he gets sheds a brand new light about, about black women, how no one stands up for them, right? The most, Malcolm X said, the most neglected person in the United States is a black woman. It's a right? truth. It's a fact. And then he just finishes this whole movie about it, and all of a sudden, guess who's getting destroyed? His wife, who is a black woman. And so I, I, you have to think about, you know, it's also. But the movie is about a father who. Though? Was she destroyed? Do you feel no, I'm no, of course, of course not. But I, like I said, it, I don't think that was like the tipping point. So I, I think you, it was like, the tipping point. I don't think it was like the you, entire bucket of water. So for you, right? you're like, it's just the fact that he tapped at all. Like, don't tap in that direction. There's already history and beef. Right. Yeah, right. yeah. It's like, like it's don't like, go there. Don't do like, it. It's like, for me, I'm pretty fine with a lot of things, but there's like certain words to me that just trigger me, right? Like, like calling someone gay, it's like, dude, you know what? I you using it wrong, but whatever, right? But then you call someone like F A G, and I freak out. Like I hate that word so much, right? And and I think maybe because for me it just right. there's like no good way to put it. I mean that just comes pure hatred, right? Yes. And so maybe for him it was something like that where it was just like he could have targeted anybody, person, anybody else, any other joke, and then I that agree was just five hundred people in the room. You're like just, just pick someone else who yeah, you but don't then have. Again, then again, with. the writers, right? The writers. If, if, <laughs> if it's true, writers. If That's it's true, then the writers thing. should have been like, dude, maybe we shouldn't like joke about someone's autoimmune disease. Sweet Jesus. And maybe we can pick on, you know. Maybe we can. Anyone else? But you know, I, I you like know. why not? Like they should have. Oh, there's so many Machine Gun Kelly. Pick on him. No, I, he's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's, and he's white, so it's better. You know. I don't know, dude. But come on, guys. I hear you. I hear you. I get it. I'm with you. I am. Ah, uh, oh, this was good. I had no idea that I was going to be so uh, emotionally drawn in multiple directions over Will Smith or um, Jada or any of the above. <laughs> I know, will. You know what's funny is everybody <laughs> was so worried about Kanye showing up at. Uh, <laughs> <Shut> up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're worried about what Kanye would do. Uh, stop. That is hilarious. Kanye's just smiling. Over right. There. He's just like, mm-hmm. That's right. For the record, I just want to say this so that it's, it's here. Uh, as a black woman, I will tell you, there's like one sentence inside of that comment that you read that I go, I get that. Um, you know, I don't know that Jada's voice was silenced, but I do think that for Chris Rock, I know, stay with me on this, for Chris Rock, being a black man, he has a second, third, or fourth responsibility for me to support a black woman. And I, even if he doesn't know how or why she got there, he does know that she is a bald black woman. And as crazy as it sounds, I feel like in himself, in that role, even if he is asshole city USA for everybody and all else, I definitely think he should have stayed away from it. Like I, like, I feel like he should know better because the truth is that E.L. Smith, right, he's a comedian. He would never in a gazillion years, he would never do it. He would know better because I listened to him talk because, you know, he's on stage with like Tony Rock. He's on stage with so many people in L.A. And 
I, as I'm listening and thinking here, I'm like, you know what's so real about this? He would have, like, uh, think of it like... <laughs> right. Like, he would His have bumper gotten rails. to that point for sure. Yeah. For sure, because he would know that no matter what, one, it's wrong, it's not going to fly, and somewhere in the somewheres, that is bad. That's not good. And, you know, like, it's... And I think that's, like, a silent thing, because I'm thinking, if someone had done that to me, not... um taking it to a global perspective because most people didn't even know that Jada was bald. I don't think I even knew. Mm. Like I paid attention to it like that. But now like everybody's paying attention to it and right. everybody's talking about it and she's at the center of the centers of a center of attention. That's tough. I don't know. So So quick follow up. It looks like this morning Diddy was in a interview. Uh oh. And he just said they Diddy asked Diddy has spoken? Yeah, they asked him all about like what was going on and he said that um, the like, way did they say, hey, wait, what's going on? Can, can you tell <laughs> us how this happened? They, I think they asked him, is this, is this going to be a problem, right, moving on? And he was like, no, nah, it's no problem. That's over. I can confirm that. <laughs> goes, it's, it's all love. They're brothers. So apparently they both still showed up to the party, the Vanity Fair Oscar bash. They both showed up to that party. And there's, yeah. I think, only 20-something or 30-something people that go. And so apparently they made up at that party there. And um, I don't know. I don't know what that well, means. Like. Oh, what I I, I I do have to give props to to how Chris handled it. You know, the moment getting slapped and very being very reserved, holding everything back, whatever emotion that he had. Obviously, he was shocked, but not reacting probably the way that he would have because he realized he was on. T- he realized he was on TV. For sure. Can you imagine if he would have reacted? I'm telling you, pay per view. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, so listen. I, 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 I think it was shock to to Will the way he reacted. Yeah, right. I, cause, because I, I mean to to just ag- absorb that and just pause for a minute, like oh, well, like what the fuck just happened? Yeah, it, what just happened? Yeah, and, and then just move on, right? Right. So so I, I think even given that he didn't he didn't even give give Will that satisfaction of of, of when he kept. That to, to your point, the second act, right? Right. He didn't give him the satisfaction to to even engage that. He, he acknowledged it, and he moved on. Right. <laughs> I also see that he's like a black man going like, "I'm not involved. I didn't." <laughs> <laughs> he's like, "I want no part." It, it wasn't he knows me. Some shit's about to happen. He's right. like, "Brother, we can't do that. We cannot do that on live." You know. I think that he was just like, "No, hands off. I'm not even gonna go there. I'm gonna save myself. Like you can yeah. drown in whatever this is. That's what I think." Ah, okay. So I got to tell you, this was so good. And I am grateful for the opportunity to just talk. My perspective has definitely been uh, shifted a little bit. Uh, and, and, and I think in leadership, especially when you hear things that don't make sense, or you watch something that unfolds, if you're not involved, you have a responsibility to respond, right? So when you're building something and when you are a public figure and you might not think you're a public figure, but as far as I'm concerned, everybody's almost a public figure because they have a platform. Right. You know, the second that you use a platform, anyone, whether it's something like this or it's on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn for that matter or beyond, it's a billboard. You, you take a platform, you have an opinion, you have a voice. I now am reminded again about why it's so important to just have dialogue as a leader because the truth is that as clear as I have been in my perspective about this, I now have, I, I hate to say it, but I now have even more supporting data, thanks to all of you, <laughs> <laughs> as to why I believe what I believe is the truth of the matter. And more importantly, because, you know, sometimes we hear a narrative and a perspective, and it's important for me, for you, for all of us to give the voice to the person who's thinking in their head and they don't know how to respond. And even though I love that woman, I say to myself, no, I don't take that exact same stance. And then it makes me go, well, what stance do I take? So Matt Gill, the Daniel, and Clifford Hughley, our wonderful, amazing client who agreed and didn't know how much fun he would have during this time. (laughs) I got to say thank you. I, you know, to the person who's listening, I want to know, what do you think? Like, what are your thoughts for real? I want to know, like, was Will right? Was Chris right? Was it just a joke? Should he have punched him? Can you just tell me what you think about the slap? I, I'm really yeah. still bothered about this. I know it sounds crazy. I don't think I've ever seen a man slap another man bef- uh, before because I think that's just a shock. I, I know. Can, I can show you it again. You know. <laughs> 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 uh, 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 uh. 
So I um, I know for a fact that you have an opinion and we want to know uh, what it is. So whether you're tagging us uh, directly or you're tagging all of us, I want to know. I'm going to respond and I can't wait to hear it. was amazing for you and you are closer to building the damn thing i can't wait to hear what your thoughts were what part you love and the action that you're gonna go take because the truth of the matter is that the person who wins is not the person who gets there first it's the person who takes action first now i've got a gift for you and it is at www.strappedhustle.com it is imperative that you run there and you see all types of goodies, starting with the seven must-haves that you gotta put when telling your story. There is so much deliciousness awaiting for you. I would love nothing more than for you to go ahead and give us a thumbs up and a five-star review on not just this episode, but this entire series of how do you build the damn thing. Like always, if there's anything that we can do to make your weekday or month better, please let us know. And more importantly, I can't wait to see you live. Whether it's at Do The Damn Thing Live or in one of our communities, or maybe you're just hanging out with us on social media. What I know to be true is that I am meant to connect with you somewhere. And I can't wait for that day to happen. And more importantly, I can't wait to see what you build. 